Wow, man down. Errol Spence, face looking slim. He looking in shape, ready to go, and he's talking greasy about Danny Garcia. Said even if he was at 70%, he's still beating Danny Swift Garcia. We got to talk about all that and more. Stay tuned to this video. Smash the like button. We working. Yo, what up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash App, and the Patreon family. We definitely working. Man, it's about to go down this week, December 5th. Errol Spence Jr. versus Danny Swift Garcia, and Errol looks ready. He was on ESPN's first take. We're going to play a little bit of what he had to say, but he sound focused and dialed in. A lot of people have questions coming off the car accident. How is this man going to look? You know, How is he going to respond to that? Danny is no pushover. Let's hear what Errol had to say. Errol Spence is considered... One of the real special fighters in boxing, tall, rangy, a southpaw, can beat you with his jab and defense. Ask Mikey Garcia, but doesn't look to do that. Looks to punish the opponent, knockout power. You have it all. You're a complete fighter, Errol. But Garcia, it, Danny Garcia, is also a very good fighter. Yes, he is. He has one close loss, very close loss to Keith Thurman. One wider loss to Sean Porter, but Sean Porter gave you everything you wanted. That was a fight of the year type fight. I thought you won because of the knockdown late, which he got up from, but that was nip and tuck the whole way. How do you plan after this kind of accident, coming back from that, to actually beat Danny Garcia? What's the game plan? Well, first of all, I thought, you know, I could have beat Sean Porter easy on the outside like I did Mikey Garcia. But, you know, my whole game plan was a Sean Porter fight even sitting in training camp. You know, I wanted to fight. I wanted to show people that. I can beat him on the inside, so that's what I did. Even with Mikey Garcia, I want to show people that I can box because people said that he had better boxing IQ than me, so I showed people I can box. And with this fight, you know, I'm just going to show everybody that, you know, I'm just uh, all around just a better better fighter on the inside, outside, you know, with the jab, you know, combination, hooks, whatever you want to do in the ring, I can do better than Danny Garcia. I mean, he's a great fighter, iron chin, very tough. But I don't think, even if I was at 70%, Danny Garcia couldn't beat me. It's interesting that you say that, Ellison. I like Danny Garcia a lot. He's 36-2. and two. His only two losses were to Keith Thurman and to Sean Porter, just like Max pointed out. But I had you as a, you know, my top pound for pound, top two pound for pound in the world. But Terrence Crawford has ascended. And I know you're not looking ahead because you're smart enough not to look past anybody. And, and you got to handle your business first. But there are a lot of people, Max included, I don't think I'm stepping out of turn speaking for him here. When we talk about a fight that we desperately want, it is Errol Spence Jr. versus Terrence Crawford. Number one and, you got to, and you got Terrence Crawford talking about everybody running from him. Yeah, nobody want to nobody want to give him those fights. What do you have to say about that? I mean, really nothing to say about it. Nobody running from Terrence Crawford. Like I said, I'm coming off a car accident and I had to fight Danny Garcia. Somebody would have picked the tune up, but I'm fighting Danny Garcia. So, I mean, I got to get past him to even think about somebody else. So, once I get past Danny Garcia, y'all can ask me questions about Terrence Crawford. Well, Errol, the, the reason I think people bring up Crawford is because in the history of boxing, Almost never have there been two undefeated boxer punchers who were both elite pound for pound in or around their best weight division in their primes where it's like a 50-50 fight. So that to me, that's the best fight in boxing in years that can be made. So, so with apologies, because I know you got to deal with Danny, but you were the one who came on and said, anything he could do, I could do better. So if you indulge us just for one second, is the idea that because in the PBC where you are, 
You guys have all these welterweights. You can fight each other, make money like you're about to against Danny Garcia. That you're waiting out Terrence to see if his contract lapses and he crosses the street and goes with you guys and then fight him? Or do you think you would fight him? Are you interested as a fighter, as a champion, in seeing who the best dude is like Sugar Ray Leonard and Tommy Hearns once did, whether or not he's with the PBC? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely interested, interested in fighting um, Terrence Crawford. I think it's a great fight. You know, he, he has a world title. I want to, I want to be undisputed what's great champion in the world, like I said. So I feel like we're going to have to cross that path soon. But, you know, my main goal is Danny Garcia on Fox Pay-Per-View. And, you know, I feel like, you know, that's the biggest fight for me right now at this point, especially coming from my car crash. So I have to get him out the way to even think about somebody else. So my 100%... You know, focus is on Danny Garcia right now. And then after that, we can talk about other opponents. Bruh, oh my gosh. Man, why does ESPN keep doing this, bro? This man just got in a car accident, and he's doing what most fighters wouldn't do, which is take a sturdy, I said sturdy name, like... Danny Garcia and a puncher and they asking about Terrence Crawford who fights on ESPN and bombarded. This is what's wrong with boxing people. This is what's wrong with boxing. The man is doing what fight fans and boxing media say they want from fighters. Take the tough stringent tests, you know, don't duck nobody fight the big fights. And they asking him about the next big fight when as he said the first time, there will be no Crawford fight if I don't get past this, you know what I'm saying, or don't get him past it convincingly. Boxing is getting real lame with this stuff. Man, the man is fighting. You see it on the screen Saturday, uh, 9 p.m., and you have one of the biggest sports you know, outlets, and this is what they're talking about. On the heels, you know, days before Danny fight, they just gave Danny his props and said, oh, Danny's no slouch. All of his losses to Keith Thurman and Sean Porter, extremely close. And you're asking a man who was in a car accident to start talking about another fight with another fighter who, you know, it's not even as big as they're making it out to be, to be honest. I want to see it. It's cool. But um, Danny Garcia, real talk, he got a better resume than Crawford career-wise. And divisionally, name name a Keith Thurman level person that Crawford fought, in your opinion, at welterweight. See, I know what I say. It may sound shocking because people get it, it immediately solicits an emotional response. They get emotional. They're like, nah, it can't be. Danny sucks. You know, Rod Salka. But tell me, Danny fought career wise. Zab Judah, Lucas Matisse, Keith Thurman, Sean Porter. Right. If we're just talking about welterweight accomplishments, Paulie, Robert the Ghost Guerrero, Keith Thurman, Sean Porter, Granados, right? He fought all these fights. All these fights. Brandon Rios. Name the equivalent welterweights to that 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 you feel Crawford has fought. So Spence Garcia, that's the only order of business. Fox pay per view Saturday, nine PM. You know, the Crawford fight, he has his own business decisions. His own promoter threw him under the bus and said he ain't promoting well. So I, I didn't understand why ESPN tried to cut to that. So I'm going to get back to Spence Garcia, which is the actual reality. That's the media day you see, Errol Spence, that's who he was training for. So that's the number one focus, Errol Spence and Danny. Danny spoiled Amir Khan. See, this is why, this is why ESPN just disrespected boxing right there. Because Amir Khan... If you actually know your boxing, there was rumors that Floyd was in prison and was interested in the Mir Khan fight because you guys know he had that plea deal or whatever, the the case he had after the Cotto fight. There were rumors that Amir Khan could actually get a Floyd Mayweather fight at that time. But there was this little guy from Philly named Daniel Danny Swift Garcia that stood in his way. That's all Amir Khan had to get past, and maybe the Mayweather fight for Khan would have happened because Khan was thinking about moving from 140 to 47. Boom. Danny Garcia derailed those plans. So I commend Errol Spence for sticking to the script and not, you know, he's sticking to code and not going off off course to talk about another network fighter and 
Now, like, bro, just listen to what I'm saying. Everything I say is eternal. That's why I'll be immortalized in this boxing game. Look at it. ESPN did a horrible job of promoting Crawford, Kell Brook. The audio was going out. There was audio sync issues. The audio was going out. There was an instant replay delay that that caused the main event to be uh, delayed by like 30 plus minutes, whatever. Um, no advertisement. But now they're trying to use a Fox PBC fighter, Spence Garcia, fight week when they have him as a guest and waste his time talking about uh, another fight. You see what I'm saying? So ESPN as a whole, as a company, they don't want to promote Crawford like they promoted Lomachenko and like they promote Tyson Fury ongoing. But then when you have a PBC fighter um, like Errol Spence giving you his time during fight week, you want to make it about something else. Real disrespectful. Promote Crawford. His own promoter says Crawford don't promote himself. And he need to fix that and get better. But now they're trying to use an unrelated fight to to boost and bolster a fight that won't even take place if Errol Spence can't get past Danny Garcia, who you guys on the show, it, it's like it's like it's catering to casuals. You know, you have nothing else to talk about, so you talk about the most casual of uh, occurrences. You know, and I don't like that, me personally. Um, Errol Spence, Danny's a good fight. Interesting that in this interview, Errol Spence said he's going to punish Danny Garcia, give him the worst beating of his life, and even if he was at 70%, he said Danny couldn't beat him. So we're going to find out. Let's keep it focused on what it should be focused on. That's my time. Let me know what you guys think. Drop your comments in the comment section. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. If you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.